In the square book, besides the square itself, Tony Wapo and I covered eight blocks coming off of the square. Among those, East Center Street has enough history of its own, we feel, to create a video. Or two, actually, as I will be covering the south side of the street in this video and the north side in a following one. Before we start our tour, first a couple of items. Center Street was known as Main Street from about 1854 until 1871. A sidebar on that, in 1922, a city ordinance failed that, a re that would have renamed Dixon to Main Street. Why was it called Smoky Row? It was known as such from the early 1870s until the late 1920s, early 1930s. The reasons given, cigar factories, men smoking outside saloons, that sort of thing. However, Richard Greer, who was born in the Oriental Hotel on East Center and grew up there, has what would seem to be the most reliable explanation. Mr. Greer said, This part of Center Street was the home of many wooden shacks, all heated with wood-burning stoves. Smoke, sometimes mixed with an early morning fog, settled on the street and discolored the handful of residences and business houses, including a few tin shops that lined it. This is the beginning of our tour, and it shows a current picture of the north side of the prior center building, which is where Stone's cor Corner was back in the day. The stone building burned during the Civil War, but was rebuilt afterward. Many businesses were in there, Stone and Albright, T. Robertson, and lastly Hunt's, right before the building was raised in 1979. Before that, there were two small buildings, both dating to the mid-1880s, that existed beyond Stone's building, just west of the alley. And a note about that alley, that alleyway seems to have been around town from the very beginning. It goes around behind all the way around uh, all the businesses around the square. Of course, in many places now, it's shut off. Here's a 1973 photograph showing those two smaller buildings that used to be there. And the closest one to us there, at one time had a Fayetteville post office in it, but it had a Southern Music Company in there from 1882 to 1897. And interestingly enough, through changes and transfers of owners, that would eventually morph into Guy Singer's Music Company. The next building uh, had uh, the Fayetteville Water Company for a number of years and a couple of those tin shops that Richard Greer had mentioned. Also had a barber shop. And I think the first two windows of the second building on the second floor, those were the offices of uh, attorney Homer Pearson. The Democrat, Fayetteville Democrat and Fayetteville Printing, Mac McRoy would be on the bottom to a little further to the east. Uh, they would, of course, move to the Fayetteville Printing would move into Craven's building and become McRoy and McNair on the square for decades. And you can see on the west side of the, build, of the, of the second building there, it was actually his address was 15, the Red Bird Cafe was there from 1938 to 1975 when it moved across the alley uh, to East Mountain. And here is a shot from inside the Redbird Cafe from the late 40s or early 1950s. The tall lady in the center is Mary Lou Allen, who is the uh, wife of my cousin Walter Allen. They're both deceased now. And here's an ad from the Redbird from 1975 after it moved over onto East Mountain. Check out those prices. Wouldn't that be great to have them today? Here's a photo of the Cravens building, which dates to 1925. Today we have the restaurant Vitro Restaurante and the Savoy Tea Company in the building. Interestingly enough, their numbers go from 21 to 19 instead of the other way around. Don't know why that uh, anomaly occurred. But anyway, in the Cravens building, McRoy McNair, many of you will remember, the printing company was in there from 1925 to 2005, 80 years. And back in the, uh, from 31 to 48, the Blue Moon Cafeteria was in the basement of this building. Then later on, it moved to uh, the Mountain Inn. The next building to the east on our tour dates to 1928. Today, Zuma Kitchens is there. And in recent years, Cafe Santa Fe and Hawaii Bryan's were here. Morley Marble and Granite Works was here from 1913 to 1928, and before that, Taylor's Saloon and then the Comet Saloon were here. Here's an 1870 ad for the Comet Saloon. Lots of options there. Returning to the previous picture, 
on the left, notice the outside patio of a taste of Thai and also the west wall of the old Oriental Hotel. The Taste of Thai patio area, based on old Platte maps and the Sanborn Fire Insurance maps, was home to some early 20th century movie houses, including the Ozark Air Dome, later called the Sky Dome, and the Scenic Theater. Our next stop is the westernmost part of the Old Mountain Inn. Today, this area is home to Taste of Thai on our right and Petri, Petri Cafe on the left. This was originally the Jennings Hotel, then the Mountain House, then Oriental Hotel, and in 1925, the Mountain Inn, which expanded in 1930 and at least a couple of times later on, before closing in 1994. Here's another larger view of that western wall of the Oriental Hotel. And here's the Oriental at its prime around 1899. This is looking west at the entrance and east wall. Here's the next stop today, Damn Good Pies, Pizza. This was part of the Old Mountain Inn and is west of the arcade entrance. This is the arcade entrance. And this area were the Blue Moon Cafeteria in the 1940s and Ferguson's Cafeteria from 49 to 1964. The arcade entrance itself led to a newsstand down below and clubs like the Flame Room and Brass Monkey were here over the years. This area has been vacant since 2005. Here's a good look at the Industrial Finance Building, dating from 1929. You can see the date and name above the arcade entrance. This is an excellent shot of the Mountain Inn around 1957. If you look at this building from overhead in Google, you can see that the Mountain Inn is, was, made up of three buildings. The Jennings slash Oriental Hotel from 1872, the original Mountain Inn from 1925, and the Industrial Finance Building from 1929. Our tour of the south side of East Center ends with this empty lot. But in the background, you can see the National Guard Armory, the Legion Hut, and the Old Jail. It's an empty lot now, but back in the day, it was quite different. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, this lot was the Jennings Stable, which ran along college down to East Mountain. In this photo, you can see the courthouse in the background, which dates the picture to no earlier than 1905. From 1928 to 1961, Montgomery Ward was located here. I'm sure that some of you remember that. And from 1961 to 1976, the Clark Off Furniture Appliance Store was located at this spot. And finally, from 1976 to 2000, the building was used as the Washington County Courts Building. It was raised in 2005. So that's our tour of the south side of Center Street. In the next video, we'll take a look at the north side of the street as we wind our way back up to the square.